Hi, join me as I undertake my very first pole lathe turning project, making a small mallet under the very helpful and kind guidance of Andrew, who is a member of the Association of Pole Lathe Turners and Green Woodworkers. Well, we're going to start with this round of ash. Um, I'm using the fro and the beetle. I get you to split that. See if you look at the end of the wood there, yeah. you'll see we'll work to one of these existing splits. Yeah. It gives us a clue as to which way the wood wants to go. Put your hand up here, out the way, and then just hit it as hard as you can. And it should split relatively easily. Nice. Now if you lift the whole thing down, put it on the floor, bracing it against your knee, if you push it away from you and your lever in this direction and stop it from moving, it should just lever off. That's it, there you are, there you got it. Yeah. Just a nice clean split there. If you just use the throw to break those last few fibres. That's it, perfect. There, you go. that's it. So at each stage, at least initially, until we start shaping the wood on the lathe, the aim of the game is just to remove as much of the wood that we don't want with minimum effort. Right. So I'd probably suggest what we do for the moment is we'll, we'll saw that off now. Yep. Okay. So this ash was uh, provided to us by Wakehurst. And it's ash that is all suffering from ash dieback. Oh, yeah. so we're going to take the mallet out of that section there, but we'll keep this section of wood because that, that means is that when it's on the lathe, we can wrap the string around this section. Yep. And then that will keep the string out of the area where we're working in. Okay. okay. You'll probably want it a little bit bigger than that, but it will give you yeah. an idea of where we're working with when we split it. Yeah, so you, you, you've got a couple of options. You can either work to the circle or you can work to a square, around the imaginary square around the circle. Okay. It's sometimes easier because when you're working with the, the shave horse, the easiest cut is a parallel cut directly towards you. Yeah. So if you're using it like this or like this, then you're not as much control as if you're using it directly towards you. Okay. Um, I would work one end complete first and then that end being narrower, it will help with holding it in the shave force. I would now flip the piece of wood and then try and replicate that similar on the, outs on the other side. Keep, try and use the sort of full length of the workpiece as much as possible. So if you then just bring it close to the line in that section, then you'll have, it'll be harder to work that section. So yeah, yeah. that's it. Try and have the blade almost sort of back up to the top of the vise when you can each time. Obviously it's not always possible, but. So, and if you, you can just split it like that. So if you get it in at the top, just tilt the draw knife like that. And you're almost using it like you're using the throw and you can just pull a split the whole length. That's it, nice. So great wood for this sort of thing, Ash. So it yeah. works nicely. It tends to be relatively straight grained. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think it's about the best UK hardwood we have for that sort of thing. I mean, obviously, I mean, don't have to tell you, but it's hickory and other sort of non-native woods are obviously very good as well, but. So, when we're putting it on the lathe, we've got a couple of options. We can either do it by eye, or uh, I just quite often use oh, a center yes. finder. Yeah. Obviously just, simple tool but um, if you put it on the lathe and it is out of centre then you're turning away a lot of wood that you don't necessarily need to turn away yeah. so, so centering it with that just helps find our centre at that end hold that in place find our centre at that end then we've got a bit of adjustment in the headstock here so if we just fix it in place there reach past the string Pull it towards you. One, two. 
that's it, just find that. And then if you treadle with the treadle, mm -hmm. just to sort of see what the resistance is like. How does that feel? Does it feel quite stiff? Does it feel quite easy? Pretty or? easy, I would say. Okay, so we'll tighten it up a little bit. And then I use beeswax. Oh, right, yeah. So just um, push it into the centers at either end. You'll just pinch a bit off. That's it, that's all you need. So not too, yeah. not too hard, not too yeah. soft either. So you see the treadle, there's a pivot point in the center there. Stop this that's how we control the string. Okay. So if we want the string to move this way across the lathe, then we point that that way. Yeah. We want the string to move this way, so just kick that over like that. And if you treadle, you'll see the string will travel back up the piece of wood. So, not the, the first tool we'd normally start with, but we want to find a demonstration of how out of round the piece of wood is. Okay. So, just a spindle gouge. Yeah. And what we'll do is, if you start treadling, and then, same principle with any turning, you obviously want to rest the bevel on the piece of wood. Yeah. That's it. And then just, that's it. So if you do a little bit of turning, say here, bit here, bit here, bit here, bit here, and then we'll see where the high spots are and where we, and then what we can do is we can take it off here and put it back on the shave horse and it'd be much easier to take that excess wood off. So obviously as we look down the piece of wood, you can see that that's fine. We're not hitting that yet. So we'll use the shave horse to take these sections out here and then we'll leave that. We'll work, once we put this back on the shave horse, we'll leave this entire section alone. So we'll just work from here, round to here, and take that down. Okay, right. That's all right, you can adjust and change it, and we can move it if, if needs be. So these tools are carbon steel, as opposed to, say, high-speed steel that you use on a power lathe. Yeah. So it means it's really easy to sharpen them in the field. It's much softer than, than um, HSS. Um, so if you rest the tool against there and then control it, try and have your hand as low as down as the tool is comfortable and then brace yourself by putting your elbow on there. That's it. So remember, cutting on the downstroke, that's it. That's the real difference, the thing that takes a bit of getting used to. Oh, very much so, yeah. So you, you always want to keep the um, treadle at a constant action. So you want as long a treadle action as you can, but just at a steady pace. But yeah, if you move slowly across the piece of wood, then obviously you won't get quite as deep gouges. So you started to do it naturally, but what, as you get it in round, you just drift the chisel across the piece of work, which helps you to produce a, a you know, not end up with something that's got or the lumps and bumps in it. So it's reached a point where you're riding the bevel the whole time rather than... Yeah, well, out. you're never constantly riding the bevel because you're always withdrawing the tool for the, for, the down, for, the, for the return stroke, but yeah. So what we're going to do now is because the speed of the lathe is dependent on the contact between the string and the piece of wood, we've just been doing roughing out at this stage, mm -hmm. so that's not critical. But what you don't want is the lumps and bumps that you get from this piece of wood not being perfectly round and therefore there not being a constant drive. Right. So this, if the string is not tight to the wood, like you could, as I say, a small gap there, a small gap there created by the high points, then yep. you don't get a consistent drive on the piece of wood. Okay. So we've roughed that out now. So what we're going to do is, we've got a couple of options. If you're feeling adventurous, you can try and turn it close to the string. If you want, we can just turn the piece of wood round. Let's turn the piece of wood round because I don't want to break the string. Okay. Well, there's plenty of extra string, so. That wouldn't be a problem if you did. <laughs> and you'll notice straight away that even with the left-hand side only roughed out, it will be a much smoother action. Than... Good stuff, excellent. Right, now what we're gonna use next, the next tool is called a board chisel or a finishing chisel, but this is, this is the planing cut that's gonna give us a smooth finish. Same principle, rub the bevel. Yeah. Um, when, will start you off at a, quite an oblique angle and then as you build confidence what you can do is you can bring more and more of the bevel into contact with the wood so don't forget to withdraw although it's you don't it doesn't have to be as pronounced obviously as with the roughing gouge 
That's it. That's nice. So come from about here and we'll try and get can work completely off the end. We've now got a round piece of wood with a mostly mostly smooth finish. So if you use the pencil to tread in your marks. So what I'd do is I would give yourself a bit of space at the end so that the end of your mallet hasn't got the hole in it so we can cut that off. Yep. So just come in a bit, okay. then set out a space for, for the head. So that you can use your hand to set out a space for your hand and then give yourself a bottom, a piece, a bit of the bottom to work with. Okay. We're gonna go back to using this right. because this is the most effective tool for removing wood. So, thank Take you. Take that down to a comfortable hand. Right? Yep or close to, and then we'll finish it off. So you can hear the difference between a nice clean cut and a slightly more raggedy cut. And that's, you know, a lot of the time we just go on feel and, and the noise it makes. You want to use the skew? Yeah. I'm more used to these. Okay, so obviously... I'm not very good with them though. <laughs> don't worry, neither am I. It's uh, definitely the most difficult tool to master. So just retaining that Quite sort of egg, action, yeah. Like just work into there and then down. Goes down into the groove, isn't yeah. It? So it's that same planing cut. Just go you know, nice and slow. Don't try and take too much at any one time. That's it. So, and these sorts of shavings that you're producing, that's exactly the sort of shaving you want to be producing. So just bring the tool around a bit. So as you're coming in like that, if you can bring the tool just more like that, what you can do is you can finish the bottom of that, oh, okay. that curve out. So that's it, try and keep the that bevel flat on of the finishing shape that you want. So that, that's it. Um, so if you use the toe of the chisel, the long edge, to um, against the work like that, okay, yeah. and just dig in to make a, a distinct line where your pencil is, that's it. Just a little bit more, and just to get some depth into there, that's it. Lovely, and do the same on that line there. Yep, now use the long edge again, just to create a little shoulder. So just using it like that, just cut out that. That's it, perfect. Just a little bit deeper. Yep, no, that's, that'll be fine. And then do the same both sides of that groove. That's it. So you just start forming the bottom there. Then using the spindle gouge, just use that shoulder that you've created to register the spindle gouge so that it doesn't, the spindle gouge shouldn't kick this way or that way. So just on the downstroke, push it in slow and steady. That's it. So then working both sides, so that side and this side, just drop that, the height of the, the finished handle to whatever diameter you want. So probably something like that sort of diameter. So you've got what, a couple of eights or an eights to go, eights together. Now, how confident are you feeling with the skew? <laughs> so what you can do now is using the heel, yeah is if you to put the heel roughly in the middle of the, the uh, block that we're going to have on the end, right. just treadle very gently and just use the tip of there to just raise the fibres. So if you want practice over here, but just on that line where you can see that it's already raised, just, just, just dig in enough that to just raise the fibres. That's it. So that's what. That's exactly what you want to do to start there. Then once you've got that line, that's the line that you can follow down there. So as you work from there, 
and as you walk, you'll slowly move the chisel this way and as you do it also rotate the chisel like that okay. and that will give you a nice smooth curve from this point down into that point there <laughs> hopefully that's fine so now go back to your starting point and do the same thing One of the key points is with the skewers, you don't want to try and finish the shape with your first pass. You've got to turn to that point slowly. It's so, taking a little bit at a time. Yeah. So you see how you've formed that bead either side. Yeah. So what I would do now is still using the skew to make that planing cut. Start back here, but instead of working like this with it, just put an ever so slight angle on it, just so that you're smoothly working so there. And then we'll start there, and then we'll start there, and then we'll finish with one long planing cut from there all the way down into that groove there. Is that starting it with a little... Starting with the same principle, so use the heel to pick up the fibres. So, also, just think about when you raise the fibres, use the very heel, but when you start the cut, the bit of the chisel you want to use is somewhere between the heel and the toe. Okay. So, because if you if you use too much of the heel itself, then the wood will the you'll you'll dig in too much, okay. and you won't be able to sort of get a nice gentle curve that you're looking for. That's it. But just try and keep that that line going with the raised fibres. So that's it. Perfect. I'm happy with the top of that. Yeah. So back to the planing chisel, finishing chisel, broad chisel, whatever you want to call it. And this is the yeah, that way or that way. Um, but just try and start from just just where your your line is and work across there. Unfortunately, definitely a lot slower than the uh, parallels when you're learning. It's a lot quieter and you can do it in the middle of nowhere without any electricity. So, so what's happening there is, it's, it's no criticism of you, I'm just explaining, is that we're actually turning slightly uphill, which you can't do. So, because, but that's only because it's slightly narrower than it is here and we're turning it out. So you can just keep going. And as long as you're keeping the chisel nice and flat and level, what you leave behind should be have a nice finish to it. Or if come you can come at it from the other end. Yeah. Whether it's the wood or me, it's definitely easier from this end. I mean, the broad chisel is only a single-sided skew, so if you wanted to, and if you were confident enough, you could finish it all the way down into there. With this. <laughs> but you know, maybe another time. <laughs> may, maybe, maybe go number two. Pretty happy with that. Yeah, good. So normally, what we do now is we'd put a little bit of decoration on it. So what we can do is we can put some little marks on it and then we can use a skew to just cut a little line. And then we use a pig piece of stainless steel wire right. to, and it will burn a, a, a mark in. Okay. It's quite an attractive finish. Yeah. You want to give that a go? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so if you put a pencil mark everywhere you want to put a burning line. Normally on a mallet we'd do sort of top and bottom and maybe one on the handle or something like that. So if you use the skew to do the same thing we did before as if you're marking a bead, so that's it, yeah, just, to, just to register a tiny groove to give some, the wire something to roll in. So put your one hand on the wire from here, put it in the string in the gap that you want, and then just hold that. You're gonna need to not only pull it, hold it quite firmly still, but treadle quite hard. Okay. Really and you'll smell it when you get it right. Oh, do I have to release on, on the Yeah, yeah. 
Well, we're only, <laughs> only when you, uh, that's it. You can see it's starting to heat already because you can see the steam coming off it. And now smoke. That's it. A finished product. Look at that, folks. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Anytime. And if you're interested in finding out more, then. It's the Association of Pole Lathe Turners and Greenwood Workers.